Hey YouTube, Copperstand here. I made a similar video back in 2019, but MapleStory is a constantly evolving and changing game, so I figured it's time for an update. Is it worth it to play MapleStory in 2021? In this video we go over the pros and cons of the game, so you can hopefully make a well-informed opinion of why you should or shouldn't play this 2D mushroom MMORPG. I want to kick things off with the positives and what made MapleStory withstand the test of time for the 16 years it's been around. MapleStory offers a large amount of content to enjoy. With over 16 years of updates, the Maple world is massive and with over 40 playable classes, there should be a class that suits everyone's playstyle. MapleStory is not super linear. Zones remain available for every character and thanks to its many systems like Monster Collection where you can collect monsters for rewards or the familiar system where you can collect monster cards to summon set monsters, there is a reason to explore the entire world and go revisit certain areas. However, there usually only are a few zones with the best EXP for every level. And while there are over 1000 quests in MapleStory, plain old killing monsters or grinding is the fastest way to level up. There also are party play zones where your EXP is improved if you are in a party and party quest areas where you and your party members can tackle various challenges. But most Maplers choose to just grind by themselves since this is the fastest way to level up. However, at higher levels, meaning past level 200, boss parties are more common and most Maplers are in guilds. So the social aspect is definitely there, but it does appear later in the game. And speaking of level 200, leveling up goes fast and feels good as well in my opinion. At level 10, 30, 60, 100 and 200, new job advancements unlock, so there always is something to look forward to. The max level however will soon be level 300 and this does take a while to reach. When for example grinding on my level 226 Demon Slayer, it takes about 3 hours to level up and I'm using a ton of EXP buffs, so this game is uh, pretty grindy. The Maple World itself is beautiful with some of the best background music any MMO RPG can offer. The game still holds a decent amount of population for its age as well, however most of them are in the North American Reboot server and the Barra server. MapleStory keeps being updated as well by the development team in Korea and Maplers can expect at least two large updates every year and smaller updates every six to eight weeks. There are always events running in this game and tweaks are being made every update so it's never a boring day in MapleStory really. Monetization wise, MapleStory offers a lot of random boxes, mostly containing either clothing items and players can also reroll their item stats with paid items. Not everything has a gacha mechanic to it, but since MapleStory was the first MMO to introduce random random boxes, thanks for that Maple Story. they are sure as hell still using a lot of gotchas. But for free to play players there are options to get those items that are usually bought with real currency as well. For example through systems like the reward point shop, here some cash items can be bought with reward points that can be obtained by playing the game. And in all non-reboot servers Maplers can buy Maple points that can be used as a substitute for the real cash currency. These Maple points can be bought with mesos and that's a currency that you can find from monsters in the game or selling items, you know just the, the currency that you always use. So in theory everyone has access to everything but getting that currency those maple points through mesos can be quite a grind. The most popular server, the reboot server, does do things a bit differently. Here Maplers can't trade with each other, but certain cash items, like those items that reset the potential stats on your item, can be bought with the in-game currency Mesos. The Meso drop rate from monsters is greatly increased in the server as well, making it easier for free-to-play players to get the stats that they need without having to spend real money or grind for prolonged times compared to the other non-reboot servers. By the way, if you are enjoying today's video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more MapleStory content. Make sure to hit the bell notification as well so you never miss a video. And finally, I want to mention that even though this game is old, it is still financially stable. So at the time of this video, there are no concerns or indications that the game will close down anytime soon in the foreseeable future. You know, it's an old game after all, but no worries about that. So MapleStory has a ton of great stuff to offer. But what are some of the, the negatives, some of the less positive aspects of this game? Let's go over that next. Because the game is so big and old, a ton of systems and content have been added over the years. And it's pretty easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of content, quests, systems being thrown your way. And it certainly doesn't help that some systems are very complex and not that intuitive. In the last few years, the developers also aim more and more to keep their maplers in their game playing as much as possible. All their systems are changed and revamped to include random mechanics and time sinks that either weren't there before or weren't that steep, the familiar system revamp being a good example of that. It also doesn't help that it seems that not enough time is being taken for bug fixing. 
especially when it comes to content created specifically for the MapleStory Global Service region. Bugs and hotfixes are more of a rule than an exception, and especially the regional content is sometimes just badly designed and unbalanced. It wouldn't be the first time that a certain system don't work balance-wise and need to be adjusted later on. For example, after the revamp of the familiar system, the whole thing was taken offline again after a day and did not reappear again until a couple of weeks later because the design was completely done wrong and everything was way too overpowered. It also doesn't help that Nexon sometimes is a tad slow when it comes to fixing bugs and issues. Another recent example is that there was a bug in a town. Every mapler that entered that town got kicked from the game and couldn't log back in and it took a full two days to fix this. Another example is some maplers lost certain items that they bought with real money a couple of weeks ago and this issue is still ongoing and that's just some of the more recent stuff that has been happening. Another point that I like to mention is that MapleStory is a massive time sink. Some content has to be done daily to keep progressing in the game. And while the content progression is nice, it does mean that it can take sometimes even up to an hour just to complete the daily stuff that you have to do. As a level 226 Demon Slayer, I need to complete Monster Park, Maple Tour, defeat at least 10 bosses, complete the Legion missions, the Vanishing Journey Party Quest and Daily Quest, the Choo Choo Daily Quest and Party Quest, Luckline Daily Quest and Dream Defender, the Arcana Dailies and the Spirit Saver Party Quest, participate in ongoing events, refresh monster collection exploration and maintain my monster farm. And of course you don't need to do all of that, but if you are min-maxing then that's what you can expect. Also upgrading the items on your character is super important and there are about 6 different ways to upgrade your weapons and items. And all of them involve some kind of random mechanic, being it upgrade chance or a chance to get a certain stat that you're looking for. This also means that with every upgrade there is a chance that you won't get the stats that you were looking for. So you have to deal with that as well. There also is a chance that your hard work and time goes down the drain because an item just doesn't upgrade or ranks down, lowering your stats. This gambling mechanic can be exciting and fun, but on the flip side, burning through your entire in-game funds just to get weaker doesn't always feel that great. MapleStory also rewards you for creating multiple characters. Every class has their own link skill and legion effect attached to it that will help all your characters on your server to get stronger. Especially if you get more invested into MapleStory, you'll have to create multiple characters. So that means that you'll be playing some classes that you might not enjoy as much. MapleStory has some really good story driven content as well, but quests and storylines are usually either a hit or miss. Up until today there was not even a dedicated story writer working on the game, so depending on who wrote the story it can either be really great or really dull. And finally, after a recent scandal where it was revealed that some of the random systems were not random but weighted in a certain way, Nexon did promise to be more transparent and has been releasing some of their random box raids since. However, these raids have not exactly been revealed yet for MapleStory Global and MapleStory C. So we're still waiting for those. Also the development team in Korea is working on fixing some outstanding issues which are looking pretty good. So there are some improvements coming our way and some work is being done to reduce some of the pains that I just mentioned. As someone who has been playing MapleStory for about 16 years now, I can say for sure that the base game is very solid. The art style and music are always amazing and the Maple World is a great place to escape from reality for a while. It is definitely worth a download in my opinion. I personally feel that MapleStory is best enjoyed casually. I'm of the opinion that once the developer and publisher start really polishing their game more and reveal all random upgrade mechanic rates, it would definitely be a worthwhile experience. So I hope this video gave you some insights in the world of MapleStory. If there are any more Maplers in the comments, let me know what you think of this game as well and if you can recommend it and what your experiences are playing this game. And that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Terry Kim, Jiju, Galaxy Art, Gusus Rodriguez, Verries, Riser Ryu, Drisumker, Plux, Zenny, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Simak, Safronex, Alonso, BG Extremes, Harry Gartner, Ido Hyman, Anwar NHI, Brandon, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Fine Aging Guy, Mr. Potemkin, Flidiot, Beamer WT, Smith, Edgar, Knife Sue and Chen125. If you would like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, make sure to check out that join button below this video. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe and happy mapling, maybe?